Welcome back programmers, the 5.72 version is out and I'm going to show you four main changes, four main features, well main, four interesting features that have been added to the uh, Pure Basic editor. And by the way, this is, this is the first version that is out the open source edition, okay? Some people have committed some pull requests and have made the modification themselves. So if you want to do some modifications in the Pure Basic Editor, check out the link in the description. There is this GitHub and you can do some pull requests and compile the editor yourself and propose some modifications. So here are the four modifications of the Pure Basic Editor. First one, a new configuration for character selection, word selection. What does this mean? Here, if I double click on my B2, it will select the dollar sign. It will select the person sign here. Here it will select the star and as well as, ah uh, no, it does not select the at, the, the arrow base here. If I put an underscore or even a number, this is part of the variable it selects it, but not the arrow base. You have a new configuration, preferences, editing, extra characters included in word selection. You don't, this is, this is the default. And now I can add the at, apply, okay. And if I double click here, it now selects the arrow base, the at sign the same way it selects the other signs. And just for the example, if I remove, let's say the dollar sign, of course, you see this will not select the dollar sign. The other impact of this is, so let's in the search and replace Oops, search and replace. Here, if I want to search for PT and check my whole words only, it doesn't find anything because at PT is considered as a single word because the at sign has been added to this list. And so it doesn't find any PT alone. I need to add here of course the add sign for it to be found so that's the first feature second feature zoom shortcuts okay you can use the mouse wheel and the control but now you can also use control plus to zoom in control minus to zoom out and control zero to uh, go back to the default zoom and this affects all files. Of course, if I zoom here and go back to this file, it's also zoomed. And control zero, back to default. Third feature, new edition shortcuts uh, in, in the text editor. So control shift up, control shift down, what does this do? Control shift down uh, will, you see the two selected lines here? If I do control shift down, I make them move within my code, okay? I can even do that with one, one row, one line of code. Control shift down, the line moves, and control shift up, the line moves up. So if I go in a bigger file, you see the impact here. I want to move this whole case between the, the first one, control shift up, one, two, and done. Control shift down, one, two, done. So you don't have to control X, control V, uh, cut and paste, you can use this. It is very practical. Also, you want to duplicate selected code, okay? You have selected this case and you want a third case. Control D, boom. Instead of doing copy, paste, 
control D, you're duplicating at once. Very practical. And another, well, I could just have a little control. I'm going to duplicate this. Control D. Very nice. And the last one is Control Shift D. Well, actually, it doesn't have any shortcut. So let me set the shortcut here. Preference, shortcuts. Okay. So zoom in, zoom out, zoom default. Okay. And also move selected lines up, move selected lines down. Delete selected lines, duplicate selection. So delete selected lines. I've put the shortcut Control Shift D. Okay. So what does this do? When you select two rows, two lines of code like this, you want to delete them. Well, you, you would tell me, but I just have to hit the delete key, right? This works. Yes, you're right. This works. But the Control Shift D is going to delete the whole lines where there is selected code. Example here. Control, if you do just delete, you see it doesn't really delete the two lines. It's just deleting the selected code. But Control Shift D, look at that. It's actually deleting the two lines where there is selected code. The lines, all the lines where some code is selected. And this works also for one line. Of course, if I just select two characters and say Control Shift D, this will remove the whole line. And if no no code is selected, it's just remove the line where the cursor is. This is very, very useful. Control Shift D, Control Shift D. You don't care where the cursor is on your line, just Control Shift D. And this deletes the whole line. And finally, uh, fourth and last feature the memory viewer has been uh, improved. So I've written this uh, small program, completely useless, uh, with that uh, breakpoint at the end. So if I run it, okay, I'm stopped in the debugger here. I want to open the memory viewer. So for those who are familiar with this tool, you can type the viable name here. Let's say plus 32. And it can display okay, the uh, memory at this address. So at the address of the foo structure, uh, we have these uh, fields. <coughs> and so you can inspect the memory. Here I am in hexadecimal view. And the new here is the this combo box here and the data here. So as you know, you can select uh, a way to display the different values so you can see the at the first address i have my 25 which is my a if i want to display as quads i would see well somewhere my quad no i don't see it i don't see it because it's not aligned okay uh, whatever long same thing byte okay first my a is a byte it's 25 and then i have my all my values for the b which is the quad so it's not easy to see as a quad you won't see it and after that i have my uh, pointers to my uh, string it's a pointer yes st all strings are pointers you don't know that that may be but uh, it's just a pointer to somewhere in the memory where the string is written so that's not why I want to show you is the, the thing I, I want to show you is this combo box here. So here you have the choice to see the value as a decimal value or a hexadecimal value or an octal value. OK, base eight. Uh, OK, just. OK, we, we could have put binary as well, but it's decimal, octal, uh, hexadecimal. Or octal. If I'm back to the byte uh, table here, you can see that in hexadecimal, 25 is written 1 9. Yes, the 9 plus the 1 means 16. 9 plus 16, 25. In decimal, it's 25. And in octal, uh, it's going to be 3 1. Yes, 3 1. 
that's for this combo now the data here the data I don't find the name very uh, intuitive but it is linked to the copy text and save text the good thing about this guy is that you can copy the text remember you can copy the text here and I can create a new program here a new file and I can paste it directly in just like this um, if I'm back in the hexadecimal I can copy text paste it that's very useful you can do the same with the save it's just gonna prompt you with a file requester and you can save you can save your file so whatever here uh, I should say I don't know file txt save and if I open the file of course same content but with the data here what you can do is paste or copy in a format to put in a data section so if I'm back to the byte table, for example, I can check data, copy text, and, and if I paste it, look at that, data.b, and you have all your data as a list of values, okay? And you just can put that in your data section in your program, and this will just copy whatever in there. So if you have an image, let's say an image, and you can display it in memory, you can just get it in the memory viewer then copy text as data and when you can you can paste it directly in your program as a data section any binary file any data that you want to extract from the memory directly into your program in a data section you can use this data checkbox and this will generate so the the type here is going to be depending on whatever is there if i select quad I do copy text and I paste I have quads etc etc and same thing for the save text if I check the box and use save text okay it's reloaded and it is saved as quads so that's the two new uh, additions to this memory viewer this combo box here and the data to copy or save the data as a data section okay that's it for the new feature of the 5.72 version of pure basic don't forget to like comment subscribe check out the merchandising and check out my new blog on pure-programming.com and if you want to purchase a license of Pure Basic, if you don't really have one, go to purebasic.com slash pp. I'm an affiliate to Pure Basic. That being said, thank you all for watching. I will see you soon.